Prigozhin, every time I think he has said a comment that is going to get him disappeared by the Russian government, he goes ahead and ups the ante. This time he's dropped a video calling the Russian MOD clowns and engaging in some behavior that is just off the charts. And we're going to be breaking down that video right now now but of course before we do if you want to support the channel the number one way to do it and get access to the combat video breakdowns that uh youtube won't let me show you especially the ones coming out of the front you're going to want to become a member of combatvetnews.com any one of the membership tiers is going to get you access to the room on the discord and access to my weekly breakdowns of all the viral combat footage so we can get the insights into this conflict that you can't get anywhere else okay let's get into it okay really the sun can't even do a translation I thought these were a legitimate news service let's see if we can get some russian no no i want you to auto translate as well let's see let's see if we can go to settings subtitles Auto translate English. I know this is going to be bad. I just forgive me. Сегодня основная часть выйдет, да? Остальные до пятого числа, как и предполагали. Вот, все. Теперь здесь размещаемся. На Бахмуте. Again, I want to point out all of these guys wearing face coverings except for Prigozhin, who it's really interesting the way he changes his look. Now he's got fatigues. He's got his helmet, but no body armor that I can see. He's just got a regular Wagner patch. And this man changes uniforms more than almost anyone I've ever seen. Any field commander, certainly. But again, it's about sending a message. And the message is wants to be clear. He's We're withdrawing from combat. This is not a combat zone. These guys are wearing their gear because they have to. But we're getting out of here. And you can see, literally, he's addressing his guys who are doing just that, who are getting out of there. Yes, it's applause. This is not applause. This is certainly a training exercise. Please, YouTube, please, it's a training exercise. I swear. See, they're at a range. This is what you would commonly do when you come back from like frontline service. This is actually something we did about the midway point of our deployment. We refreshed ourselves on soldier skills, engaging with crew served weapons, right? Grenades. Why? Because you oftentimes find yourself that there's a handful of skills that you practice and practice, or you're not practicing, you're executing. And then there's some skills that are high value, but you don't do that much, right? We didn't get into firefights we hardly got into firefights in terms of the percentage of days, right? 99% of days, there was zero, zero small arms engagements. And so that means that you have this high value skill using your engaging targets with your individual weapon, but you rarely got to use it. So there was a danger that it would atrophy. So what you do is when you're off the line, you practice those skills that are very valuable but not frequently used medical care is another great example when i was again in afghanistan it was fairly rare that we took a serious u.s casualty or even afghan casualties were not super super common but it meant that a lot of those individual medical skills putting on a tourniquet checking an airway calling a nine line we didn't use them that much so we had to train when we were off the line to keep those skills fresh Okay, now we're translating for some reason, right? He wants at least a month to settle down. It was a tough year. Yep, that's an understatement. I also think it's interesting that his video, he's got this like press core here that's filming on their iPhones. Interesting, we've also seen this guy before as a second in command. I also want to point out, there's a, this is a very attractive, very made up reporter. And it's, oh, sorry, it's worth noting, Prigozhin also has his own press corps. I think it's called like the Concord 
press corps or something. Again, this is so crafty. The reason it's so crafty is because Prigozhin is withdrawing. He says, this is the Russians' chance. He's explicitly saying, this is the Ministry of Defense's chance to show what they're capable of. Let's see it. Let's see them. We have done our part. We need to rest and refit. Now it's time for the MOD. He's leaving just before the start of this counteroffensive. And so he's making sure that Wagner is leaving on a high note, to use the conductor analogy. He's, he's pulling out when things are good, and then he will return to the fight when probably the Ukrainian counteroffensive is wrapping up so that he gets to say, hey, look, as soon as Wagner came back, the tide turned, not realizing that it probably was incidental. Whoa, this is bold. And then there will be the next scuffles. I think this time on the Russian territory. And this is weird because on one hand, he's right. There's the incursions into Belgorod. But now he is, a. this is, again, it's a double entendre. He's also implying that there will be a power struggle within Russia. This is a bold statement. It's hard to understate how unbelievably bold this guy is and how untouched he is from for, by saying these things. And he's explicitly saying, we are not going to participate in this <laughs> in people just being pointlessly butchered, which he's correct. That's silly. And he's notorious for sending his guys to be pointlessly butchered. Now, I want to point out, this is not how wars work. You don't get to simply operate independent of anyone else. This is part of the flaw or the deepest issues that that Russia has had with its with its military, right? It's uh, is that its command and control is so badly broken that you have people who believe that this is an effective method of command and control to own a sector and not have any level of coordination with other sectors. That's not how combat command works. <laughs> I have no idea where Papanza is. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, Papanza in Severo Donetsk. Huh. Okay, interesting. So he's talking about the advance towards Solidar when he did that flank and there he so that's probably what he's shouting out he's shouting out when they made that push to the north toward solidar where they said that they he sh shouts out the 40th marine i'm curious why i'm curious why he shouts out this one particular unit and maybe it's a maybe it's his way of saying hey you can tell i'm not just some sort of exaggerating for the sake of exaggerating i want to acknowledge and give credit where credit's due some units are good Okay, that is interesting too. Again, that he is not returning to Russia per se. Okay, let's stop that. That he is not returning to Russia. He's just simply pulling back to a rear camp. Something that basically the Chechens have done the entire time. 